Okay, let's practice algebra. And what I have here is a nice, lovely problem that, uh, of course, uh, if we take a look at it, we have fractions within fractions and variables. So this is going to be an exciting problem. And, of course, I'm going to go through this step by step so you can see exactly how this problem is solved. But uh, before I actually uh, show you the steps to solve this problem, I'm going to give you the solution. So if you want to go ahead and attempt this problem and just, you know, check your work, uh, hold on for one second, I'll show you the answer. But uh, put your answer into the comment section if you want to pause this video and work on it. This, this particular problem would take most uh, students yeah, maybe at least a full minute, maybe a couple minutes, okay, if you want to work, you know, in, not in such a rushed way. But this is something that you're absolutely going to have to be able to handle in any sort of algebra course. So we're going to get to this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you are struggling in math, if you think that you're a bad math student or you just can't learn math, I'm telling you that is not correct, okay? Almost all students out there, 99.99% students, can be very successful in math, but what it requires beyond the desire to want to learn math and put in the work is great math instruction that's clear, understandable, and comprehensive. And that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. You'll find a link uh, to it in the description of this video. It will make a huge difference in your ability to learn mathematics. Now, most of you out there are going to be taking a, a test in your future that has a dedicated math section. You don't even realize it. If you're doing any kind of school, college, uh, vocational training, uh, or you're trying to get some sort of uh, certification, you're going to run into a test that has a dedicated math section. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare for those things. I'm talking about like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. I could go on and on and on. So uh, anyways, just so you know, I have great test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning uh, homeschool math programs for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of uh, great math notes, hopefully you don't, because you should be taking awesome notes now. If you're not, you need to start uh, doing this immediately, but you can use my notes. Uh, I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video uh, helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get to the solution, and here it is. All right, so here is the problem. This uh, is the final answer. Now, if you were able to get this problem right, okay, uh, you're like, oh, I did this problem. Here, uh, This is the solution I got. It has to be exactly this. Okay, if it's not exactly this, then you need to kind of work on this. Um, but if you were able to do this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face in A++, a 120% and multiples uh, star so you can feel extra special today. That's very, very good. Okay. Now, if you didn't get this right, if you're like, no, I don't even know how to do this problem. Well, let's get into it right now. Okay. So here we go. All right. So we're dealing with fractions and obviously uh, where you have fractions within fractions, those are called complex fractions. So we, we're going to want to just take this problem one little step at a time. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is focus in on the numerator. So let's focus in on the numerator. Uh, you don't ever want to, you know, well, when you come really, really good at math, sometimes you could do like two, three steps in one, you know, uh, you could do two or three things um, on a particular problem, you know, and show that in like one step from here to here, and you did a couple different things. But typically, you're just going to want to just take one step, write down your work, and then take one step again, write down your work and just kind of whittle the problem down this way. So let's just focus in on the numerator. And when we do that, we're adding, we're trying to add fractions. Just because we have a variable here doesn't, um, you know, change the, uh, the fact that we're adding fractions. So when you add fractions, what do you have to have? Well, you have to have the same denominator, okay? And here we do not have the same denominator. We have three and nine, okay? So how do we get the same denominator, which of course is the lowest common denominator, in this particular situation, it's easy to fix this up. So what is the LCD? Well, you can see over here that it is 9, okay? So how do I get uh, both of these denominators to have 9? Well, this is already a 9. So to get this to be a 9, just multiply that by 3, which means I have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. So that's going to give me 12W over 9 plus 8 over 9, okay? Now here, again, I'll deal with this denominator separately. So this is your first step. Let's get these denominators the same. So now, when you have the same denominators, you could simply just add the numerator. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So here I have 9 over 9, 12w plus 8. So now let's add the numerator. So I got 12w plus 8 over 9. Okay, so that's um, our first kind of major uh, goal or phase of this problem is to clean up that numerator. And now that is done. So now let's go ahead and focus in on the denominator. So we have 16w over 9 minus 4, but 4 over what? Anytime you see a number by itself and you're like, well, you know, you want to think of this as a fraction, you just put that over 1. Okay, so this will be, uh, be nice and easy to understand. So when I look at that, I'm like, okay, what's the situation? Well, I'm trying to subtract fractions. Just like adding fractions, I need to know the LCD. So this would be over 1. So what is the LCD? Well, this is 9. That's 1. The LCD is 9. Okay, so we're going to have to fix this up, and uh, this will be 4 over 1. So again, we're focusing in over here now. We already addressed the numerator. So this is 9, uh, 16w over 9. So I need to have 9 uh, in this denominator. So I need to, to have 1. I need to multiply that by 9. So I need to multiply the numerator by 9. So that's going to give me 36 over 9. So this is what we need to write, okay? All right, so we have 16w over 9 minus uh, 36 over 9. So same denominators. So now I need to just subtract the numerators. Okay, so let's show that now right here. So this is going to be 16w minus 36 right there over 9. Okay, so we cleaned up both the, uh, the numerator expression and the denominator. So we're ready to kind of take this to the next level. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the situation. So here is the problem. We have this thing over this. But better, well, a better way to interpret this is this numerator right here. This fraction bar, okay, right there is the division symbol. So it's this divided by this. Okay, so let's write it that way. The numerator is being divided by the denominator. So instead of writing it this way, let's go ahead and write it this way. All right, so we have 12 uh, w plus 8 over 9 divided by 16 w minus 36 over 9 because when you're uh, dividing fractions, you know, you want to write it in this manner. Okay, so how do we divide fractions? Well, we change division uh, problems, uh, fractions into multiplication problems by flipping the, fr uh, the fraction to the right of the division symbol. Okay, again, you need to know basic fraction operations. If you're struggling with fractions, okay, or any of this basic, basic math, uh, you might want to check out like my math foundations course, course or my pre-algebra course. Uh, but at this level, uh, you would probably, this is probably like an algebra one or beyond type of, uh, you know, level problem. Okay, this is, yeah, I may mean, be a little bit too much for uh, pre-algebra students, but you know, probably handled it anyways. So let's go ahead and continue on. So division, remember we return to multiplication by flipping this fraction over here, finding the reciprocal. So this goes to the numerator and this now becomes a denominator and you could say have that written out right there. Okay, so now we are multiplying fractions. How do we multiply fractions? Well, hopefully you remember, okay, we multiply the numerators and we multiply the respective denominators. So this is going to be nine times this so you can see I have it written right here, 9 times 12w plus 8. You want to put that in parentheses. That's really important. Anytime you have, um, you're have, you adding or subtracting things with variables, put those in grouping symbols. This is one of the most common little things that students forget to do that get them into a ton of problems. So this is going to be 9 times the sum of 12w plus 8. Put that in grouping symbols. We'll address this here in a second. And then 9 times this expression. Again, put that in grouping symbols. So we have 9 times this. All right, now a lot of you are probably saying, hey, can't we cross-cancel these 9s right here? Yes, you can, because these are factors. It's this times this and this times this. So let's go ahead and continue the problem. All right, so as I just said, we could definitely cross-cancel these 9s. We'll cross-cancel them right there so these 9s go away. That's why you don't want to multiply in just yet. You want to look for opportunities to start cross-canceling like factors. Uh, just to kind of make this problem easier. And uh, when we do that, we are down to 12w plus 8 over 16w minus 36. So, you know, if you got this as your answer, that's pretty good, but it, it's not, you're not done yet, okay? Because here, you want to look to factor out the greatest common factor, all right? Because we can, you know, just looking at these terms, 
I'm like 12W and 8. Boy, this has a 4 in common, and these have a 4 in common. So let's get that 4 out of there. So 12W plus 8, I can factor out the greatest common factor. That's 4 times this, 3W plus 2. Again, if you don't know how to uh, factor um, like the greatest common factor, all these algebra skills that can help you out. I have uh, tons of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you with this, but you really want to learn this in a methodical way. That's why I would recommend, recommend one of my courses. So 16W minus 36, okay, I can factor out that GCF, that's 4, uh, over 4W minus 9. And you can see now you have a 4, and this 4 can take that out right there. Those 4s cross cancel. And finally, finally, I'm left with 3W plus 2 over 4W minus 9. Okay, now even though you didn't maybe get this problem right in the beginning, if you got this problem right by now, you might basically, if you understand my steps, well, I'm still going to give you a nice little happy face for being awesome and paying attention. Remember, math is a game of focus, all right? And I think it's good to think of it as a game. And, well, you know, when you first learn a game, are you going to be like a pro at it? Are you going to be like a total expert at it? No, okay? It takes time. You have to play that game over and over and over and over and over again. And then ultimately, you become super good. Math is no different. Algebra is no different, okay? You get better at skills. You recognize situ uh, situations. You know, for those of you that love video games and stuff, think about it. When you first played that game, were you good at it? No. Well, you know, but now with these games out there, you're like, oh, I know what's going to happen. This is going to, uh, you know, you start even anticipating things in the game. Math is no different, okay? Math is a game of solving problems, which requires a lot of skill and practice, okay? And that's the whole, whole idea behind this particular video. And if this video helped you out, okay, well, consider helping me out by liking and subscribing. Again, if you are in the game of algebra, I have a ton of additional algebra videos on my YouTube channel. I have over a thousand plus uh, videos actually from basic math to calculus. So check that out. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.